Hey everyone, a very good morning to all of you. Myself Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. So before moving on to the first question, let me give you some information. First one is that this PDF is absolutely downloadable for you all. You can download it from the Telegram channel of ours, and the link of the channel is in description below. Second information is for the SEBI aspirants. So guys, the crash course has been uh, launched by us, and it is on the website. If you want to just check it out, then you can visit our website for the SEBI Grade Day course, uh, crash course of 30 days. Now let's move on to the first question of the day. Jammu and Kashmir is soon to become the first union territory in the country to have a district level good governance index. The index will assess the governance practices of districts in the union territory based on 58 indicators divided in 10 sectors. How many districts are available in Jammu and Kashmir? So guys, here the right answer is option A. Num uh, 20 districts are available in Jammu and Kashmir. And Jammu and Kashmir is soon going to become the first ever union territory to have the district level good governance index. So let's delve into the details of this good governance index. So first of all, it is going to assess the governance practices at the level of districts in the union territory. And since Jammu and Kashmir is the one that has launched this, basically announced to launch this uh, district level good governance index. Therefore, it is very important to know the number of districts that are there in Jammu and Kashmir. That is 20. Okay, so don't forget that. Now, this index is going to be based on the state level good governance index that was released on the good governance day. That is the birth anniversary of Atal Bihari Vajpayee on December 25. So I hope that the recent good governance index you all have already covered that index and if you haven't covered it yet then do cover it because that is very important from your exam point of view now jnk uh, is going to assess the uh, governance practices of the districts on 58 indicators divided into 10 sectors more about this index is that the central government is going to set up the district good governance index in Jammu and Kashmir and Department of Administrative Reforms and Public Grievances under the Ministry of Personnel is going to help the Jammu and Kashmir uh, administration in preparing this index. Therefore, it is very important. You need to know which department of the center is involved in this district level good governance index. Therefore, do remember this thing. Now, the technical support for this index is being provided by the Center for Good Governance, which is located in Hyderabad. So that is all for this index for now. Now let's move on to the second question. What would be the growth rate of manufacturing sector in FY22 as per the NSO's first advanced estimate of national income for 2021 to 2022? So here the right answer is 12.5%. Now guys, not only the income estimates have been given by the NSO's first advanced estimate, but this, uh, this first advanced estimate report also tells about each and every sector's growth as well. So we will be looking at the major sectors like agriculture and allied mining and manufacturing construction. So we will be looking at that in detail. First of all, the very first thing that you need to know is the GDP growth forecast for the current year. That is 9.2%. RBI has forecasted 9.5% for the current year. So guys, do remember these two growth forecasts because these two are by the indigenous authorities of India. First is NSO and the other is RBI. Now, this growth rate means that the growth over the FY20, that is 2019 to 20 period, okay? It is just 1.3%. So in this year, we have recovered 1.3% of the growth rate, which was there in 2019 to 2020 FY20. So guys, this is the pre-pandemic year. Therefore, we are comparing this year's growth with the pre-pandemic year's growth. Okay. Next is India's real GDP in the current uh, fiscal year is projected at one uh, rupees uh, 147.54 trillion. Uh, and the estimate for the previous year was rupees 135.13 trillion. Next is real gross value added at basic prices. Again, it is estimated at rupees 135.22 trillion in FY22 uh, as against this 124.53 trillion in FY21, which indicates a growth rate of 8.6%. And these are the sector wise estimates. So the major important sectors are agriculture, forestry, and fishing is going to have a growth rate of 3.9%. Mining and quarrying will have 14.3%, manufacturing 12.5%, construction 10.7%. So that was all about this first advanced estimate of national income for the current year. Moving ahead, which of the following statement is correct about the new fintech department of RBI? So option A says it will regulate fintech innovations and facilitate international coordination on fintech. Option B, it will facilitate innovation, identify challenges and opportunities associated with the fintech sector. Option C, it has subsumed the department of regulation within it. So guys, here option D, that is only A and B statements are correct in relation to the new fintech department that RBI has created. Now, if you want to uh, look for the facts in this news, then there are no facts uh, literally, there are no numbers here in this news. You just need to go through the context of this news. Why did RBI need to create this new fintech department or was it already there and now it has been created as a new department? So it is just a basic, very cute story that we will look into uh, here. Okay. 
so uh, the background is that in 2018 only a fintech unit was created under the department of regulation which was later transferred uh, to the department of payment and settlement system in 2020 okay so you are not required to memorize these numbers these are just mentioned for the information purposes yes if you want to remember then 2018 was the year when this fintech unit was created by rbi within its organization now the purpose initially the purpose of this fintech unit was to cater to the needs of rbi in relation to the fintech innovations but right now with the creation of a of an altogether new department the workload of this department has also been expanded like not only uh, this department will cater to the needs of rbi in relation to the fintech sector but also it will regulate the fintech innovations it will monitor and incubate the fintech innovations that are uh, that are ongoing in the market and the innovations particularly that can have a larger impact in the entire financial systems okay so now the function function has been expanded of this fintech department now apart from this this fintech department will also uh, handle the matters related to interregulatory co coordination and international coordination on the fintech so that is also a new function that has been added so that was all about this new fintech department of rbi next is which year has been designated as the year of unicorn in india so guys it is 2021 okay now this is not a very old news that i am covering right now it is the very latest news the year of unicorn is 2021 because many uh, many startups have achieved this title of unicorn in 2021 that's why 2021 has been termed as the year of unicorn now it is not an official announcement that 2021 is the year of unicorn it is because many startups has have seen this rise in their position they have seen this achievement therefore 2021 is basically uh, seen as a year of unicorn in india now when was it announced so it was announced at a very special event which was the startup india innovation week okay so an event was organized uh, as part of this week which was celebrated from january 10 to 16 under the azadi ka amrit mahotsav and during that event it was announced that 2021 has been recognized as the year of unicorn because over 40 unicorns were added in this year only so guys can you tell me that how many unicorns are present in india at this moment of time this is your question for the day do mention it in the comment section below now india is a global innovation hub and india is the third largest uh, startup ecosystem in the world we have more than 61000 recognized startup as on date and do not forget my question the number of unicorn startups in india at present moving ahead what is the launch date of trishna mission of isro so the right answer is option d 2024 is the launch date of this mission now before moving into the entire news let me inform you that this is about the list of missions that isro is going to launch in 2022 okay and during this list uh, this announcement only the trishna mission was also announced that it will be launched in 2024 so we are going to look into the number of missions that will be launched in 2022 and some other missions that were announced by isro okay so first is gaganyaan mission so do remember that in 2022 an crewed mission will be launched okay there would not be any human on the spacecraft but in 2023 uh, the crewed mission will be launched when humans will be there in the spacecraft now the overall cost is less than rupees 10000 crores and i don't think that i need to tell you this thing that it is the first mission uh, for sending humans to the space aditya l1 again the first mission to study sun now guys again i would say that this is important this is the position where the aditya l1 uh, spacecraft would be placed in the orbit that is lagrange point 1 l1 mission which is 15 lakh kilometers away from earth the purpose for choosing this location is to uh, is to stop aditya l1 from uh, hindering from getting hindered by the eclipses so that aditya l1 can take can study the sun all the uh, all the 365 days of the year so that's why this uh, place has been chosen next is chandrayaan 3 mission now this chandrayaan 3 mission will study will continue to study moon with the help of the orbiter of chandrayaan 2 mission okay so the orbiter of the chandrayaan 2 mission is already there uh, it's still orbiting moon and it will the chandrayaan 3 mission will take the help of the orbiter the data from the orbiter and then it will continue the study of sun so that is all about this chandrayaan 3 mission small satellite launch vehicle will also be tested by isro in 2022 only and the purpose of launching this sslv is basically to make india a hot spot for launching these small satellites for the other nations small commercial satellites of the other nations as well as the private companies of india as well now already isro has signed six agreements with four countries to launch their satellites during 2021 to 2023 which has already generated 132 million euros of revenue okay 
now the another mission is exposat now it is going to study pulsar and supernova both of these are stars next is trishna so trishna is going to be launched in 2024 and the missions that i have discussed so far with you all are going to be launched in 2022 only exposat and the gaganyaan etc etc okay now this trishna will be launched in 2024 and it is a joint mission with the cnes which is the france uh, france space agency okay french space uh, agency and the purpose of this mission is to accurately map the surface temperature of earth the land surface temperature of earth the full form of this mission is thermal infrared um, imaging satellite for high resolution natural resource assessment trishna will basically acquire the imagery of earth's surface in the thermal infrared with a resolution and revisit frequency never seen before now basically let me tell you that at present whenever the earth's temperature is measured by any satellite so it takes a certain a fixed amount of time period the time period for trishna will be reduced so this time period of noting down the land surface temperature at present moment it's huge and trishna will basically try to reduce that time period therefore the frequency will be very high of this trishna mission okay next is the venus mission so all the details regarding venus mission are still awaited but yes we are soon going to launch a mission on venus as well okay so that would be india's first again moving ahead the last mission that isro has announced now is disha now the launch date for disha has not been announced yet but the details are here so it is going to be a twin satellite mission or twin satellite system that will study the earth's aeronomy the uppermost layer of the earth's surface okay it will be launched by this physical research laboratory and disha is again an acronym for disturbed and quiet type systems at high altitude okay so it uh, will involve twin satellites orbiting earth at an altitude of 450 km so all of these are just facts related to disha uh, satellite which basically is going to study the uppermost layer of earth's atmosphere atmosphere which is termed as earth's aeronomy so that's the basic purpose of disha mission and here all the questions for today end and now we are going to move into the gk factory section of today so guys yesterday if you have seen the yesterday's session then uh, i discussed that uh, the joint military exercises that india conduct with the asian nations okay so today taking this asian a bit further i i, I am going to discuss why is asian important for india after all many of the countries in the asian at least you can say four to five countries in the asian grouping are not very significant in terms of economy or trade or fdi per se then why is india laying so much emphasis on asian only what is the significance of asian for india we will understand it in that term and if there is a question on rcp okay uh, then you can use this understanding to frame your own conception regarding the rcp what were the benefits of rcp for india had india joined it okay i hope that you are aware that india has withdrawn from this agreement uh, because it was not ready to open its uh, markets for the foreign foreign markets like china okay so india has withdrawn it withdrawn from the rcp but had india joined it then what would be the outcomes for india for uh, for joining the rcp so basically it will uh, it will frame your perception regarding the rcp and asian particularly asian why do we need asia okay again this is the slide that i talked about yesterday also cambodia is the chair this is the theme 2022 is the india asian year of friendship now i hope that you all know that we have a look east policy uh, that particularly aims to strengthen india's relation with the asian nations also we have another forum which is named as fipic fipic okay forum for india pacific island countries so this is the collaboration between india and 14 indo pacific islands so i hope that you are already aware about this platform and this is the asian that we are talking about so under the look east policy india is laying so much focus on the eastern part of asia so in in light of that i have mentioned fipic here now what is the economic significance of asian for india so if india india's northeastern region is connected with the uh, asian nations like myanmar thailand singapore malaysia then obviously trade opportunities will be created economic opportunities will be created for the northeast dev uh, areas development and uh, and i hope that you know that when the modernity comes when the industrial revolution comes or when the economy gets its chance to open up then development follows the its footstep therefore if the asian is in our favor then basically if we can get the opportunity to have the trade uh, to boost the trade and uh, connectivity with the asian nations bordering the northeastern states of india then obviously it will give a win win situation to the northeastern states next is that india asian trade itself 
is very important and uh, very huge i should say 78.90 billion us dollar worth of trade was conducted between india and asia and i hope that you know that this trade is inclusive of imports and exports as well okay so this is the data from the ministry of commerce yesterday also i mentioned that singapore is the top trading partner of india among the asia nations followed by malaysia and vietnam so singapore is becoming one of the top investment and trading hub for india in the eastern asia out of the total global trade of india asian account for 11.5% of the total global trade of india so this is huge guys asian is having a significant uh, proportion in terms of economic significance okay next is next is again we are going to discuss more on the economic significance so i told you that if the northeastern states are connected uh, with the asian nations then obviously it will it will give a boost to the economy of these northeastern states so we ha have one kaladan multimodal uh, project multi multimodal transit transport project so basically through this project the kolkata port of india will be connected with the sitwe port of myanmar and then through the sitwe port the connectivity will be provided to the mizoram state of india so this is how uh, we are going to use many uh, many modes of transport one is ship here then the road transportation will be there and then uh, we will reach mizoram now you would be thinking why don't we just go directly to mizoram instead of going through this route obviously it will give a good impression on myanmar also that we are helping them in boosting their economy as well and we are collaborating with them but why to uh, we need to spend so much amount and go to mizoram when we can go through this chicken snake also we can go by air also by air to we already have this option and we will always have this option to go by air in the north northeastern states as well as far as the weather remains um, good and the air connectivity remains good which is already being worked upon under the udan scheme of india but talking about the land connectivity so this chicken snake is a very precarious location because it is very near to the china border and basically uh, china can and uh, can uh, disturb this route at any point of time and disturb our connectivity to the northeastern states therefore we have developed this multimodal project now this multimodal project will not only help us in getting to the northeastern states but at the same time it is also going to help myanmar and mizoram in boosting their connectivity and thus give opportunities to the people living in these areas to develop trade okay so one project is this another project is asian india network of university now this is just a proposal at this stage next is india myanmar thailand trilateral highway joining more in manipur with myanmar and thailand so you can clearly see this highway project which is joining india to thailand by road so this is again a very good initiative but as you can see that both of these very ambitious projects are going through myanmar and right now the situation of myanmar is in itself very precarious okay so we cannot foresee when will these projects be completed but as far as the vision is there then obviously uh, in order to boost the connectivity india has taken significant steps next is what is the significance of asian from the security point of view okay so here is india and this is the entire asian region so i hope you are aware that malacca strait is already there between singapore and sumatra island of indonesia and majority of the trade uh, is through basically we have a good amount of traffic between uh, singapore and sumatra island malacca strait is a very busy strait in terms of trade okay plus if there is peace and we have the support of the asia nations then we can continue to have a dominant position in the indian ocean so that is also very important plus not only this uh, regional dominance is required we are also collaborating with the asia nations in terms of cyber security in terms of terrorism in terms of tax evasion so all of these civil kind of offenses are also being worked upon in collaboration with the asian nations okay next is the geo strategic importance now uh, for this i will come to this picture again so as you can see that china is continuously working to uh, increase its dominance in the south china sea okay so if it continues to do so and uh, continues to increase its dominance in the indian ocean region then obviously we will need our neighboring nations to support us okay because if they also become uh, they also get against us and give their bases their naval bases or coastal areas to china on rent which is a trend see, being seen in many countries because they do not have enough funds therefore they get trapped into the debt trap of china debt trap of china and in order to protect our neighbors from this vicious debt cycle of china india needs to support these asian nations okay and one reason is obviously to stop the increasing uh, penetration of china in the indian ocean region okay so that's the geo strategic significance of asian for india 
नेक्स्ट गाइज इज दैट एशियन इज द मोस्ट पावरफुल रीजनल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन आफ्टर द यूरोपियन यूनियन सो यूरोपियन यूनियन इज वन ऑफ द मोस्ट मोस्ट पावरफुल रीजनल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन बोथ इन टर्म्स ऑफ ट्रेड एज वेल एज सिक्योरिटी एंड आफ्टर दट एशियन कम्स एट द सेकंड पोजिशन सो विद यू मेनी विद मेनी नेशन ऑफ द यू इंडिया इज ऑलरेडी वर्किंग ऑन इंप्रूविंग इट्स रिलेशन इन टर्म्स ऑफ ट्रेड इन टर्म्स ऑफ कल्चरल टाइज इन टर्म्स ऑफ पीपल टू पीपल टाइज सिमिलर इज द केस विद एशियन ऑल्सो सो दीज टू आर द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट जियो स्ट्रेटेजिक सिग्निफिकेंस सिग्निफिकेंस ऑफ एशियन फॉर इंडिया बट only india is benefiting from this collaboration no in fact asian nations are also looking at india as a major power in the south asian region to counter china's increasing uh, increasing expansionist policies tendencies okay so not only in order to uh, counter beijing but asian nations are lo- also looking at india to boost their own e- own economies boost their own uh, educational uh, scenario etc etc okay business investment tourism education culture etc etc so it's a basically a symbiotic relationship between india and the asian nation no not only one party is benefiting from this okay now cultural significance is also there india and southeast asian nations sh- share a strong cultural bond i don't know that if you know this fact that ramayan is not the national epic epic of india only it is the national epic of many southeast asian nations which is which are a part of asian grouping so for example thailand has its own version of ramayana ramakain laos has phra lak phra ram malaysia has hikayat sri ram myanmar has yama thado indonesia has rama kwaka so these are their own versions of ramayana and they act as the national epics the cultural epics of these nations now how these nations became become indianized this is an another topic that i will cover some day in the gk factory only the indianization of the southeast asia but for uh, today we need to restrict ourselves to this asian uh, only okay so i hope that you know now what is the significance of asian for india so it's time for us to know some facts also that can be relevant for your examination so first is ifta in asian india free trade agreement so framework on comprehensive economic cooperation between asia and india was signed between 2000 signed in october 2003 and when this agreement was signed it served as the legal agreement for further signing of three agreements trade in goods agreement trade in services agreement and investment agreement between india and asia okay so asian india trade in goods agreement was signed and entered into force on 1st january 2010 and under this agreement india and asian have reduced or eliminated their tariffs on 76.4% coverage of goods okay so this is a huge achievement next is asian india trade in services agreement which was signed and enforced in 2014 so it deals with the services trade next is india asian investment agreement signed in november 2014 again uh, it ensures the fair and equitable treatment for investors now india asian collaboration one forum is the india asian annual summit that he, that is conducted by the leaders of these nations another forum is east asia summit then we have asian defense ministers meeting plus then we have asian regional forum as well okay uh, in 2018 india had invited 10 leaders asian leaders as the uh, chief guest for the republic day and this was seen as a very uh, good uh, good uh, gesture from india's side economic relations with respect to india asian trade and investment relation uh, investment relations have also been growing steadily and there is a rise in investment flows particularly the quality of fdi investments from the asian nation so we have already read about the economic significance of asian for india so for today i am going to restrict myself to this much information only thank you so much guys for watching this session and if you really liked it then do not forget to subscribe the channel hit the bell notification uh like this video and share it among your friends and if you have any suggestions uh, regarding the topics that i can cover in the gk factory then you are all welcome do mention in the comment section below which topic do you want to discuss with me so i'll take it up in the another gk factory section thank you so much guys for watching this video goodbye